Right now, the Chiefs have $3.2 million in cap space. Um, they can acquire a player right now with a salary of $5.6 million without restructuring any contracts. If they were to restructure Travis Kelsey's contract, that would give us about $4.48 million. Um, so, J.D., you talked last night after the postgame show because everyone was talking about receiver, 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 D-Hop, Mike Evans. You're talking about fit. Um, the guy has to fit, and you can't just bring in on anybody in here. When you hear the names Mike Evans, when you hear the names DeAndre Hopkins, talk about what you're thinking of when you talk about fit. And we're ta- and I'm talking about on the field and also as far as what we just talked about here, the money, making the money work. Um, what what do you make of some of these names that are throwing, uh, people are throwing out right now, J.D.? Uh, let me see. Hold on. Let me get my, my mic here working so everybody can hear me. Uh, one, I, I think, you know, obviously the names are are – Names that everybody knows, that, that everybody covets their ability, what they can do. Um, and what I was what I was saying last night is that every team uh, is not fit for every player as far as what they do offensively. And I'm talking about scheme wise. And so sometimes you have to have a scheme that fits what a player does well. OK, uh, I've said this with. Andy Reid's offense with when it started here in Kansas City is this offense is more geared for the smaller wide receiver. And it is. And, and you look at, you know, up and down the board, who they've been getting in the draft, who they've been trying to find, you know, in free agency, uh, guys they've been coveting. And it's been more so that smaller build type of guy, 5'10, 5'9, maybe six foot. Uh a guy that's got a, you know, look, got a lot of juice, very elusive, quick, um, you know, runs a lot of jet sweep, can do a lot of, you know, wide receiver screens, which you can do at it with anyone, but it's more of the wide receiver who can find a window, kind of get open. And then I said before what this, this offense does, and they do a very good job of it, is it's almost like running concepts, but it's almost like scramble drill too, okay? So scramble drill – so people don't understand what that is, is at the at the end of the game or sometimes when a, a, a quarterback flushes out of the pocket. Now the wide receiver mirrors the quarterback or tries to get open, try to find a lane that he can find to sit into where he can catch the football. And so I see a lot of that happening with our offense. Now, would a guy like Mike Evans or D-Hop come in here and run that type of offense? I don't know. We know Mike Evans. Uh, we know DeAndre Hopkins are very athletic guys. They do a very good job going high point the ball, catching the football, very athletic. They could do all those different things. We, we know that. Uh, that. That was one reason that we was asking for D-Hop during the offseason. We wanted D-Hop, and he's like, hey, man, let's go get D-Hop. Everybody's like, oh, he's an old receiver. He's not going to give you much. But there's things that D-Hop has that would be very uh, – Lucrative. We were trying to get D-Hop here because of his skill set. We knew he is a guy that's very athletic. Everybody's like, well, you're getting an older receiver. D-Hop is 75% is still better than a lot of guys, 100% in this league. Okay, that's just the reality. Uh, that's the reason he was one of the most uh, prolific wide receivers in the past 10 years in the NFL. It's because of the things he was able to do. Now, Mike Evans. Mike Evans is a guy who has a lot of ability. We know that. He's a number one wide receiver. Uh, his talents is being wasted, no doubt, down in Tampa Bay, having uh, old uh, old Baker, uh, old, uh, you know, I, I'm making fun of Marcus because Marcus likes that guy, you know. But hey, but he's 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 losing his talents down there. We know that. Uh, but I do believe that Mike Evans, his price point is just too much for us to handle. It just is. Uh, it's going to cost us a lot of money to get him. Some trades, you know, some draft trades, and then all of a sudden. You're going to have to try to give him a big deal after he gets getting here. That's what's going to happen. And so I just I, – I, I don't see Mike Evans working for us, okay? That's just price-wise. Yeah. Well, that's the one thing, too, that when we talk about um, – when we talk about um, price-wise – so DeAndre Hopkins, I think this year alone, I think he's just due one point one million dollars a year, uh, or just for this year. But yeah. next year's where this is where like the whole train for a guy who can give us kind of future potential uh, flexibility. 
And DeAndre Hopkins, as far as next year, I mean, that, that deal he signed with, with Tennessee, next year he's due $15 million. I mean, it's just like, that's a lot of money. I mean, and we just don't want it, and we don't want to do it. This year, $1.1 million is fine. But when we start talking about tre- future assets for a guy, you know, who's going to be making $15 million next year, and we got LeJerry Sneed, we got Chris Jones uh, in uh, free agency next year. So, like, there are guys we want to retain, but at the same time, like, I don't know. It, it's a tough position to be in. That's why – that's why Veach always goes for the guys who were maybe first or second round picks, maybe didn't pan out in the other situations. Mm-hmm. And like, he tries to make those guys work over here. Diamonds in the rough kind of deal. Cause he doesn't want to end up paying somebody. Cause he knows we have to retain some of the guys we have. So it's kind of a rough situation. I mean, when you hear D hop making 15 million next year, is that something that like kind of throws you off? Like, nah, like that's. Yeah. That's, that's tough to do. Uh, 15 million, you know, for D hop next year. The thing is these guys are wizards with the, uh, with the cap, <clears throat> they can make things work. They really can. You know, they they kind of hold money. They know what they can actually do. So the thing is, there's no guarantee Sneed's going to be around. And the reason he's not, there's no guarantee he's going to be around is because we got young corners who have been playing who are capable of doing the things that Sneed does, right? Sneed is a leader. He, he makes tons of, tons of plays, okay? But then all of a sudden, if you want to do the whole negotiation tactics, you can say, well, he gets a lot of mistakes too. There's things he gets lost in in, in, in you know, in, in coverage, right? He gets, you know, silly penalties on him at different times of the game. Okay. He had what, how many? Four yesterday, I think it was, somewhere like that, four or five. Um, but he's a good receiver. He's good, he's a good corner. So it's 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 really incumbent upon those guys there dealing with the whole cap space. And they can do it. They really can. They can make some things work. You know, we, we talked about Marquise Brown as a guy, okay, that is almost in the kind of the same boat. You kind of get him here on his rookie deal, but also, too, you're going to have to look for getting him a, a sweet deal, right? That's 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 one thing you had to do to try to give him a sweet deal. Uh, let's just say all, all you could use different scenarios trying to get a guy here, right? But you're trying to find a guy that has a price point with guys that give you production. I know somebody said Juju Smith-Schuster. Okay, he's up there in, in New England. You know, do you bring that guy like that back? Um, he, he, was, he was able to eat here. He got a lot of catches, but he wanted to go get the bag. That's what he wanted to do. He wanted to go somewhere, and he thought he should have got paid. And, and look, and, and rightly so. I'm not, I, I would never disparage anybody for wanting to get paid that money. None whatsoever. My thing is this. We, we are so, so down on this wide receiver group that I don't believe that we have enough patience to even let them develop. I don't. I think McCall Harmon coming here last, you know, when uh, um, getting traded back was a good move for us. I think offense looks a lot different with McCall being in there. And so him working back into the offense, you still have McCall Harmon, Rasheed Rice, who's been tearing up the, the offense, you know, but we did, couldn't get him – you know, acclimated the first few weeks, but now he, he he's he, he's a baller. He's a player. Okay, he's catching four balls practically every game. He he took that one on the on the on the uh, sideline, stepped out for about forty yards. Right, look at that speed he had in, and then ran over a, a DB. So he has that ability. We know that. Some of the some of the plays that that we want to we want to try to do, what people love seeing, is throw the ball up, let him go get it. Like Jerry Judy caught that one yesterday. Portland Sutton went up and and, and <laughs> Joker climbed the ladder to go get a couple of balls. You know, Jerry Judy might be a guy that you might want to get. Sure, I'll, I'll sit there and say, I, I'm gonna throw a name out that people haven't really been talking about, uh, and that's Hunter Riffro. Hunter Riffro is a guy that could possibly come into this offense who ate a couple of years ago, and then all of a sudden they're not using him out there in in uh, in, in Vegas, not using utilizing him. Well, because they got two monsters on the outside that they could do it and catch anything, right? So Josh McDaniels don't like Hunter Renfro. Hunter Renfro is a guy that could probably come in the offense and eat a lot. He really could. He was good at Clemson. He would be good here. So we like Clemson guys, apparently. Do. Do. <laughs> so, you know, Cornell Powell, uh, Justin Ross, you know, why not bring me Hunter Renfro and see what he can do here? So I, I, there's a lot of different guys. Marquise Brown, Hunter Renfro. I said Curtis Samuel. Look, there's – a plethora of guys you can go out there and try to do to bring in here, but it has to be the right fit. It has to be the right guy fit for our culture. What we're trying to do. Uh, 
these guys can't be selfish, you know. And like I said, it's still a, 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 a one of those things where it's uh, learning the offense, that whole growing pain of just learning what we're doing offensively. Uh, me, I know what it means to get into a room and then have everybody around you say, look, we need to get better. We got to do it, and we got to put the onus on us. And I think a lot of it is just the patience. When I heard Patrick talk about in the press conference and, and Andy, when talking about consistency, doing things, the nuances and whatnot, and then it's not talking about the wide receiver. They're talking about themselves. That was part, that was part of the deal. That's what we need to figure out is we, we not just put it all on the wide receivers, and everybody keeps saying the wide receivers are not open. And I watched that game twice last night, okay? And there was times that guys were open. There was times that Sky Moore was open. The one time he drops it in the end zone, which he probably should have had. He should have had that one. Uh, but there was times he was open. He caught some balls yesterday. So we can go back and forth. My thing is, look, we decide to stay on the, with this wide receiver group. I'm ready to ride with him. I am. I have no problem whatsoever staying with the guys that we have in the room. I think because once you have this, this core group of guys, and they understand it's them against now, not just uh, the rest of the world, but now Chiefs Kingdom is some of it, right, that – what you do is you bring them closer together. I think they, they start going out there and playing with a chip on their shoulder. Uh, a veteran presence would definitely be uh, be needed if you did anything like that. That's why I said D-Hop during the offseason. D-Hop would have been that guy to come in and help these young guys develop to understand what it, what it means to be you know, a pro, right? So we can keep going back and forth with our guys we want to get. Uh, man, you know what? I, I'm I'm – we're talking about dropping seven, dropping eight, and guys getting open when there's only three guys going out in routes. So we, that's what we're looking at. <laughs> this, so it's the whole scope of what goes what goes on. Denver had a great game plan against us. They really did. Okay. Pat realized, okay, I need to sit back and, and find out what's going on with the coverage. Okay. Maybe the calls need to be better. Need to be better calls for these guys to actually get open and to eat. And so we, there's many things that we can go in and say, this is where guys need to improve. Uh, do we go and get a wide receiver before this deadline thing? That's only on them, man. It's only on them. I can speculate and I can say it so many different things, man, but I, I'm, I'm always trying to find answers in the building and in the room. Yeah. I like Hunter Renfro. I think I think he's solid. I think he'd be great with us. I, again, this goes back to the question as far as uh, divisional rivals wanting to trade with each other. Because um, you mentioned Judy and Sutton, and Renfro. Obviously, if, if it's the right deal, they'll do it. Uh, but I'm, I'm seeing here you kind of mentioned play calling because it's, it's more. I feel like everyone's just blaming receivers, and I think it's more than just MVS or Sky Moore. I mean, you mentioned the play calling, and, I, and we, everyone in here, a couple of people in here, uh, BS Flick. Had no trouble scoring in the red zone under B enemy. Now he's gone and no one can get open. Problem lies more on Nagy than anything else. Ooh, who so, said that? Uh, BS Flick said that in the comments. And then uh, Casey Chiefs fan. I agree with that. The current offensive scheme looks like um, dog poop. Um, looks like the same old plays and nothing creative. And that's something we've been talking about. I mean, that's just, that's, uh, that's, I mean, yeah, that, that's, uh, we talk about the full scope of things. It's not just receivers. It's not just, you know, dropping balls. It's more than that. Um, and the play calling is something that we, we have talked about. That It's lack of creativity, and we do go creative. It's way too gimmicky and way too cute. It's like, just, let's give the ball a PM15, let them, let them do something. Um, but, but it's easy to blame the young guys, you know, because you don't really have any dogs out here that's going to say anything uh, in the media and say, hey, man, it's, it's not necessarily us. So you don't have that guy. Nobody's, you know, nobody's going to go out there and speak for them like somebody needs to, you know, because they're all young guys. And so the thing is, when you're looking over the film and you look at, you know, all 22, when you're actually looking at what the, the defense is actually doing to us, then you're like, okay, maybe guys are not necessarily, uh, you know, not running good. They're getting open. They're cra I think their the routes have gotten a lot better. I think the routes have gotten a lot better. Like I said, with McCole Harmon being here, now you can try to push to take the top off the defense. You know, we got to take some shots down the field. We had to take some shots. So there's a lot of different things, man, we said. Look, we even talked about this, Marcus. We even talked about maybe bringing in a tight end, right? Because they said, oh, well, what if Kelsey goes out? Who's going to bring, okay? 
let's let's go on say our name, but we we thought about would be a good fit here, okay? Because he's just a pass catcher tight end. He ain't gonna give you nothing in the blocking game, but that sucker can run routes and he's athletic, okay? And that's Kaseki. We said he's a guy like that. He gets, he's another guy that we could work into the offense to get open, right? If that's all he's gonna give you, then let it be that, okay? Let it be that. But like I said, man, we can we can we can stay here all day naming names. Yeah. Okay. The main the, the reality is it's gonna take the guys in the room. It's gonna take the guys in the building. And that's not just the wide receiver, it's the coaches too. It's the quarterback too. Okay. It takes everybody to get a game, you know, the team thing going. It takes all of us. It takes all of us, right? And so yeah. it, the Chiefs are no different. They're no different. Denver just had a better game plan for us yesterday. Uh, they did a much better job, and they deserve the win. Somebody said it yesterday. We deserve the L with some of our output, not just offensively, but defensively too. So when we get into these grades, you're going to see my grades, and you're going to say, okay, uh, well, J.D., why are you graded like that? I'm going to tell you why I graded that way. Okay? Oh, yeah. So I went through this this, this went through this film, man, <clears throat> and it, it, wasn't, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty. So um. – Yes, yeah, so that's a beautiful segue uh, to get into the grades. JD, one more thing. I saw some of myself, seen a few people actually. Um, guy who hasn't really, who going into last year, everyone was loving him in Chicago. And then last year happened, and then he wasn't, I didn't hear his name ever again because they, they traded for DJ Moore. But Darnell Mooney was a guy a lot of people were high on going into last season. That's a guy, he's on a contract year. Um, he's a free agent after this. He's only making like, like $3 million this year. Uh, but yeah, contract year. What do you think about Darnell Mooney type of guy? Because that's that's the kind of guy. He's young. He's not making anything. And those are the kind of guys. Everyone's talking about big names, Hopkins, Evans. I think if there is a move, and I don't know if there will be a move tomorrow, but if there is a move, it's going to be another guy, an un, un, unproven guy, a guy who's shown flashes, but like is young and is not. You know, it's not wide receiver one that's coming over here. You know, like what do you what do you what do you make of Darnell Mooney, or how much do you know about Mooney? I mean, shoot. Sure. <laughs> I think he's a talented guy. We could say, what's the name of oh, what's the name more out there in, in Arizona too? There's a lot of different guys we could say. Mooney is a guy that you could possibly use. Does he fit into our scheme? Is that's a question? Does he fit into our culture? That's another question. That's the thing about it. I, I don't know. I've been extensively looked at him, uh, but sometimes you hear names come and go. Uh shoot, we can go, you know, high sight is 2020. I was talking about guys we should have gotten the draft. I'm talking about guys who got in the draft two years ago. Yeah. Whatever, you know, so. Okay, we can play a game all day. Yeah, but it, it ain't no point. No point in doing that. Now let's go back to the CH draft and draft Michael Pittman or um or uh, T Higgins in that uh, that first round instead of uh, <laughs> instead of CEH. We wouldn't even be talking about receivers right now. <laughs> yeah, um, I, <laughs> it, it, uh, CH uh, obviously he'll, he'll probably include in a, in a in a in a you know a package. If you did any, th- any type of trade, right, to make it yeah. for for a team, but hey, man, like I said, I think you get everything fixed in the building. I think they got the answers. Uh, they they got they got the ability. They got the guys in the room that can still win a Super Bowl. Okay, they can still win a Super Bowl, and so it just may just take some guys longer. It may do it. We halfway through the season, all right? Halfway through the season, yeah. uh, these guys can get these things turned around, and I think they got the guys in the building to do it. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out the best clips from Chief Concerns. And if you prefer to listen to the show, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts.